All right, so I think enough of the uh, crew has opted in here. So uh, we'll go right ahead and get started. Um, thank you so much for attending today. I know we've got a, a really great mix of both current eMERGE clients and uh, probably future eMERGE clients in the, in the mix there. So uh, just once again, really fast, uh, my name is Jason Nicosia, and I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing over here at eMERGE. We are your comp comprehensive online marketing strategy. And, you know, um, as an online marketing company, one of the things that's very important for, uh, to us to do for our clients um, and our network is provide continuing education. And so I'm very excited today to introduce Scott. Um, I'll put my contact information if anybody needs anything from me at the end of the presentation. But um, I'm really excited to have Scott Holstein from Search Influence here today. Uh, Scott is an awesome guy. He's uh, a business development associate over there. And uh, he works for Search Influence. They're a national online marketing firm headquartered over in New Orleans, right uh, down the street from us. Scott and his team focus on helping small and medium-sized businesses grow online as well as white-label online marketing products for uh, different types of media publishers and partners. And Scott, uh, in particular, drives and manages all of the direct sales leads, secures business partnerships, and helps build the Search Influence brand on both a local and uh, a national scale. And Scott is quite the SEO expert, so um, very excited to have him today. Scott, welcome. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm very excited to be here, and I appreciate you guys having me. And um, you know, the goal for us today really is to make sure that everybody on this webinar has a chance to walk away with something that they can implement themselves, that they can go back and do without the help of a web developer or an SEO company. And so I'm really going to start from the bottom and kind of work our way up here and not get terribly technical. There are a lot of simple things that you can do to increase your web presence. So just a little bit more about me before we get started. I just want to introduce myself a little bit. Um, like Jason said, I am the business development associate here at Search Influence. Um, I came from the hospitality industry where I really learned a lot of customer service skills, but found out the hospitality industry just wasn't for me. Um, in the process, though, I did discover my love for online marketing and digital media, and and you know today I am the you know the head of all direct sales efforts here at Search Influence, and I. I've really, really enjoyed my past year here and look forward to a long career um, here at Search Influence. Some other stuff I do outside of my role here is I blog for chamberofcommerce.com, and there you'll find business advice on online, online marketing, sales, networking, and some other really helpful topics. Um, so I definitely encourage you guys to check that out. It's chamberofcommerce.com. And whenever put in a situation where somebody asks me to say something interesting about myself, I always like to mention the fact that I played semi-professional baseball in Austria. It was probably one of the best things I'll ever do in my life, and uh, just a blast. But kind of a little interesting tidbit about me there. So to give you guys a little bit more background on Search Influence, when I came here, I didn't know a lot about uh, the company. And when I came in, I realized they had already accomplished a lot. It was... Um, 2011, and uh, they had already made the Inc. 500 list in 2012. They were also named to the Inc. 5000 list. And our CEO, Will Scott, had been quoted in Forbes and Search Engine Journal and a bunch of really major publications. Um, and the, the company was really on the rise. And I feel like I, I got a little bit lucky landing here. Um, but like you said, we're located in New Orleans. Uh, our company was started by husband and wife. Will and Angie Scott, who are now the COO and CEO of our company. And we really started with a focus on local search, and that's where you know our bread and butter is. We've, we've grown from that, and we really offer a full suite of online marketing products. But local search is really where we got started. All right, so beyond search influence, we'll move on and, and really get to what everybody's here for. What is SEO? And hopefully you know that SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. And the way I like to describe SEO is just giving search engines the right signal so that they know that your content is going to be the best for their users for particular keywords. Now that's really a mouthful. So it's, you know, to, to break it down a little bit more simply for you, um, 
you know, we just want to tell Google that you're the best results. And there are a number of ways to do that. And um, the way that search engines work is they crawl every single page on the internet and they read the text on those pages to determine what your page is all about and what your business is all about. And you know, we call we call it crawling pages because Google calls <clears throat> their crawlers spiders. And I'm probably going to allude to that a couple more times today, so I just wanted to give you that explanation. But um, the things that factor into where your site ranks for what keywords really varies widely, and they're they're weighted differently, and it's constantly changing. And and that's really why there are companies like Search Influence around because it is. Uh, it is a bit of a battle to make sure that we're staying on top of Google's next algorithm update. Then you see down here three consistent factors that we uh, that we run into quite often are keywords, content, and connections. And although uh, Google's constantly changing their rules, you know, with these things have really remained constant over that time. And as you can see here. Google really owns the, the market share when it comes to search engines. Search engines, you know, including Yahoo and Bing, are also significant, but I'll probably at some point refer to Google today when I actually mean search engine, and you can see why. It's really the most significant one out there, and, um, and it's really the one that we're going to focus on the most because of that. Before really understanding search results, you really need to understand I'm sorry, before understanding SEO, you really need to understand the search results. And this page probably looks really familiar to a lot of you. This is just a search engine ranking page, and it's showing results for locksmiths and queens. And at the top, <clears throat> excuse me, at the top of the page and on the side of the page, you'll see paid search results. Paid search results are also known as PPC, paid, um, paid ads, or Google AdWords. So these are areas where you can actually pay to come up for selected keywords. And the one hesitation people have with this is they say, I don't click on those ads. I know they're ads, so I'm not clicking on them. Well, the fact of the matter is about 20 to 30 percent of people do click on these ads. And at the end of the day, you're not paying unless they're clicking over to your website. And that's really the end goal anyhow. So it's definitely something we recommend as kind of a to partner with SEO because it does show immediate results and you can see um, you know, more immediate return on investment there. I'm sorry, and then we have local results which are also known as the maps results or the maps pack and these are based on the location data of users and the businesses they're looking for. And just because you're on a PC at home, don't think that Search engines don't know where you are because they know far more about you than you probably even want. But at the end of the day, it's to serve you the best results when you're searching for particular items. And then just below that at the bottom, you see organic results. And organic results are based purely on the content on and off your site. And this is where keywords, content, and connections really come in more so than anywhere. And we're going to go into a lot deeper detail on local and organic search as we go on here. Local search includes not only what you're looking for, like a product, service, brand, but it's also where you're looking for it. So where the searcher is, whether it be a city, a state, or a neighborhood. And one in three searches on search engines are local searches. And if you think about it today, you constantly have your smartphone in your hand. There's never a question that goes unanswered. Whenever you know you want to, you want to look for the best barbecue place in town, or um, you need to find a plumber or something like that. Even if you're not at home, you're using your phone and you know you're making these searches based around cities and neighborhoods. As you can see by this chart here, local results are the ones that people trust the most. And so this is just you know one more reason why we really need to have a presence within the local results. So why is SEO important? I'm assuming most of you know why SEO is important, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But 
as you can see, search engines have really taken, um, you know, taken the advertising world by storm. Yellow pages are really falling out of the picture, and the search engine market share is growing. And it's really an opportunity to get in front of your customers when they're looking for your services. As good as a TV advertisement or radio or billboard may be, that person is not necessarily looking for your services at that time. And so that is, it's just not as relevant as being in those search results. Also, if you're not on the first page of Google results, you're likely never going to be found. And you know, they, they have this funny little meme here that says the best place to hide a body is on page two of Google. And that's because <clears throat> nine out of 10 people never even make it to the second page. Most people will adjust their search before they go to the second page. They think, oh, I must not have put in the right term that you know, I was looking for. Um, and as you can see, the higher up that first page that you are, the more the clicks you're going to get. So now we're going to dig into it a little bit deeper here and talk about on-site SEO, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's focused on everything on your site, front end and back end. We're not going to get overly technical with the back end, but we'll talk about a few little things that you can do. And you'll see here, just looking at this, uh, looking at this page, there are a lot of different areas for opportunity for optimization. We're going to break these down and take them really one by one. Before we can get into too much detail on on-site optimization, you can't really get into it without talking about the Google algorithm update, Panda. And Google algorithm updates are just basically the laws of Google. And they're constantly changing them to make sure that they're giving their users the best results. And they're basically you know, trying to keep people from gaming the system. They want to give them truly just the best results based on the content that you're putting on your site. And so that's what Panda was there for. It was to, to get sites that had really great content up to the top of search results. And some questions you need to ask yourself about your content might be, is it duplicate? And there are, are plenty of different ways you can have duplicate content on your site. If you used a website builder or a temp or templated content for your industry, it's likely that you know that content is somewhere else, and you can you know you can find that out fairly easily if you just pull a paragraph out of your website and search it. Um, you know you can see if it exists anywhere else, or you can use a website called SiteLiner.com, um, which is really helpful, simple tool. You just enter your URL, and it'll tell you exactly um, how much duplicate content you have on there, if any, how many broken links you have, and uh, it's a free tool that uh, I use fairly regularly. Another question you want to ask is, is your content helpful or is it, you know, is it specific and insightful or is it just bullet points and not, not going into a lot of detail? I think that building out content for all of your different services is probably one of the most important things you can do. And of course, you want to avoid silly things like spelling errors and stylistic errors. These are all things that search engines are able to pick up on and because of the Panda update are really you know, rewarding those who give unique quality content. Now, you can't really start search engine optimization without doing keyword research first. It's really the first step and you really can't move on past keyword research, and it sounds really simple. You have a, you definitely have a perceived idea of what people search for to find your services, but quite frankly, you're not 100% certain. So keyword research is just the process of looking at historical online search behavior for a given product or service. So there are a handful of really great um, keyword tools out there, and if you just search keyword tool. Um, you'll find plenty out there. There are some really good free ones. We definitely recommend the one from Google AdWords because, of course, Google is, uh, Google is king. When doing keyword research, you want to make sure that you're very thorough and creative. You want to use you know, plurals and variations of different words. And, you know, for example, I think you know, Realtor New Orleans um, is you know, really a, probably a well-searched term, but you have to look at other terms like 
realtor, uh, realtors, New Orleans, Louisiana, or uh, real estate agent, New Orleans, things like that. There are different variations of every service that is provided. So you just want to make sure you explore all those different areas to see where the search is and what the level of competition is for that search. Another recommendation I make is to be very specific about the, the keywords you choose. If I'm a pool construction guy, I build in-ground pools, that's what I do, the keyword pool has probably a lot of search behind it and probably more so than any. But somebody searching for pool New Orleans is going to be looking for, a, you know, could be looking for anything. They could be looking for a public pool to go visit. They could be looking for a billiards club. So it's really, it really varies widely as opposed to a word like in-ground pool construction New Orleans. Now you know the people searching for that term are looking for you. Now that we know how to find our keywords, we want to target, uh, now we know, excuse me, that uh, now we know our keywords, we want to start to use them on our site. And metadata is really where it all starts. And metadata just means data explaining data. So you'll see here that we have our title tag up at the top. This is the single most important, important piece of content on your site. Um, for ranking purposes. And as you can see, it's listed here, and then it's listed again um, down here, and that is just a clip of a, uh, a result in the search engine ranking. And you'll see we have it listed here, Day Spa, Albany, New York, Complexion Spa for Beauty and Wellness. And this is really something you want to stick to. You either want to have your keywords or services um, in front, followed by your brand name, or vice versa. And it's it's not really something that you can vary from. It's it's really something we found to be very consistent and very helpful in getting pages to rank. Then we have the alt tags. Alt tags are just descriptions of images because search engines can't read images. They need you to tell them what it is. And if you don't tell them what it is, all they see is image on the page and that's it. So. Um, those alt tags are really a good opportunity to, again, use any keywords that you might uh, be able to spit in there and then to give search engines more information. And then finally, you go down to meta description. And the meta description is not as much for search engines as it is for users. And I'm sure you all are familiar with this when you, you know, type in a particular keyword and they pop up your results. The words that you actually searched for are bolded. And so you want to make sure that those are um, those are prominent, you have a good call to action, and your meta descriptions tell the story of what the page is going to be delivering. Then there's some on-page content that you could focus on as well. And, you know, you have to think about who works at Google. It's a bunch of engineers, and engineers love outline form. So, of course, we want to start with our headings. You have your top heading here. That's the H1, and that's really the one that matters the most, um, obviously, kind of makes sense. And then just below that, you have the H2. And this is really just another opportunity to use keywords in a natural way. You don't want to just use keywords for the sake of using the keywords. And, and this really is something that is true throughout. You, you want to look as natural as possible to search engines. Just below the heading, you have what we consider to be optimized content. Again, you really have to find a way to use your keywords in a natural way. You don't want to make it you don't you don't want to make it sound spammy like you're just putting the word in there just to put it in there. And you have to think you're going to have humans reading this anyway, right? So you really want to make it sound natural and you know pointed to your customer. And then there's anchor text and internal links. This, like I said earlier, applies to the search engines crawling your site, and it also gives your users a better experience. So if you have a page it makes sense to link to on particular words, you're, also, you're giving your customer a good experience, but you're also giving search engines a chance to follow that link when they crawl the site. And then they'll go over to that next page and crawl the next page. So internal linking is really important in that, but 
do it where it makes sense. Don't just have internal linking just to have it. Another really strong on-site SEO tactic is blogging. And blogging is really great for a few reasons. It gives fresh content to your site so those, those spiders keep coming back to crawl the site because it sees that you have a new page or you know, new content on there. It's also a good chance to use your keywords. Um, and a word that we use in you know, the SEO industry is long tail keywords. So you may not be, you may, you know, you may be optimizing for something really straightforward, but there are also things people are going to be searching that might be helpful. So if I'm a hairdresser in New Orleans, for example, I may, you know, I may be targeting the term hairdresser in New Orleans, but when I write a blog, I might write about how to deal with humidity um, in New Orleans, you know, when it comes to your hair, because I'm sure that's a a problem a lot of people face here because it's very, very humid and you never know. You might pick somebody up um, as a client just because you gave them really good information. And it never hurts to, uh, to have a blog to really build yourself up as an expert in the industry. And the way to set up a blog is, is probably not as difficult as most people think. We exclusively use WordPress, and you do not have to have a WordPress site to have a WordPress blog. WordPress is extremely user-friendly, it's easy to use, and then you also have an opportunity to use SEO plugins to make your blog a little bit more search engine friendly. A couple of SEO plugins that we use are All-in-One SEO plugin and Yoast plugin. And I think some people have some hesitation on using um, WordPress maybe because they think that you know it's it's templated and you know it's not going to fit my site but as you can see with this site it really you know we it can really cater to the look and feel that you want so you have the regular website and then you have their blog I also think it's important to know that when writing blogs that you know, you really need to be writing something that's meaningful. Don't just write a blog because oh, it's that time of the month and we need to write a blog, or you know, we're, we're writing blogs once a week and we just we need to get one out. Make sure what you're writing is worth reading, and then use your keywords, long tail keywords and your short tail keywords. Um, when you're writing those blogs, add tags and categories and anything that's relevant um, to really what your users are searching for. And make sure that your blog is educational. It doesn't need to be promotional and you know really going after um, you know the sales side of things. You really want to be as educational as possible here. And here's just another example of you know a website that has a blog on it here that you know, we're able to match up very well. It just it slots in. It looks you know same look and feel as the uh, the site. And I think this is actually a good example of a blog topic, you know, a long tail blog topic um, where, you know, for a plastic surgeon, um, for women considering a breast lift or breast augmentation, this is a topic they might search. And then there are industry related blogs. And you really want to include a lot of detail on maybe something in the news about your industry or even something that is kind of semi irrelevant. I mean it, it can be something along the lines of a DUI lawyer, you know, writing a blog about uh, Lindsay Lohan getting her sixty seventh DUI. And it doesn't necessarily have to be really serious, but you know you can you can always tie it back in at the end to uh, to the law and you know what your main topic is. And then WordPress offers a really great tool called Authorship. And Authorship is just a way to link content you create with your Google Plus profile. And it gives you the advantage of having that headshot in your search results. And as you all know, we're visual people. And if we're looking at a page full of text and there is a small picture on it, it no matter how small it is, we're going to see what the picture is first. So this is actually a fairly simple process, and if you go to plus.google.com, 
forward slash authorship, um, you can find some really detailed instructions on how to do this. It's not a terribly complicated process, but one that we're not going to drill down into at this point. So now we move on to off-site SEO. These are things away from your website that have a direct influence on how your site behaves with search engines. And it can be anything from your Facebook page to an, a press release written about you. Um, it really varies greatly. And again, before we can really talk about the rules around off-site linking, we have to talk about Penguin. And you know, this is the other major Google algorithm update that you really have to take heed to. And the reason this update was put into place was to attempt to diminish the importance of low quality links that are going back to websites. Uh, the number of links going back to websites used to be much more of a factor when it came to ranking than it currently is. They're now looking for more quality than quantity. And Buying links a couple of years ago was pretty common practice, and some people still do, but this is a tactic that is not effective and it can actually be damaging because Google is now penalizing people for buying those links to irrelevant sites. And an example might this, for this might be a real estate agent in Trenton, New Jersey, getting a link from an Indian hotel site. There's just not much relevance there, and search engines are getting smarter, and they can figure that out. So much like we start with keyword research for on-site SEO, we start with NAP for off-site. And unfortunately, it's not this kind of NAP. What we're talking about is the acronym for name, address, and phone number. And then occasionally, you'll see NAP plus W, which is, of course, the website. And it's really important to have a consistent NAP throughout the Internet. And I'll really go into more detail here, but first let's discuss where you need to be listed. So this is pretty straightforward, right? No, no, unfortunately it's not. It's very complicated, um, but the website here, getlisted.org, is a great place to start. You just enter your, in, your business information, and it'll give you where you're currently listed and any inconsistencies in your listings. So we really highly recommend getlisted.org as a good place to start, and getlisted is likely going to um, recommend that you submit to New Star Localese, because as you see, Localese submits to a lot of the major data feeds here, and all this information is being shared with other places. So another one that we use is Universal Business Listing, and that's UBL right there for Universal Business Listing, and those uh, submissions take 90 to 120 days to really start to um, show, but it's very effective in cleaning up bad NAP information or putting new, in, new NAP information out there. Some other major profiles that we highly recommend claiming are Google, Yahoo, Bing, and Yelp, just because these are really authoritative places, and Google, Yahoo, and Bing are, of course, the search engines that we need to be ranking on. And Really, you want to you want to make sure that you're doing this correctly. It's a fairly easy process, but these are done by postcard and by phone, and they all vary slightly in how they do it. But they basically send you a pin code to verify that you're the real business owner. And then, as you go on to claim more directories, <clears throat> you want to make sure you're claiming really relevant directories to the category that your business falls under, the the industry, the vertical, and Categorical directories are really where you're going to do that because they're organized by industries, verticals, or verticals within industries. Another place you'll make sure, you want to make sure you're listed is City Search, which is a local directory. And City Search is just an example of one of many local directories. Um, and as you get more granular, you'll want to look at directories in your area that you know have some authority. So for New Orleans, it might be NOLA.com or Stay Local or the New Orleans Chamber of Commerce. Beyond giving just your name, address, and phone number information, you want to give these profiles and citations content. So you really want to start with you know, the name, address, and phone number information. And what I recommend is writing a 200 or 250-word bio 
on your company if it's not something you already have. And make sure that you're explaining what you do, the service you provide, and if you can sneak those keywords in there, that's always a plus. Other things that you can add are pictures and relevant posting. So posting is, is not as difficult as some people may think. It's really quite simple. If you find something interesting about your industry or you have something interesting going on with your particular company, share it and share it everywhere. It's, you know, it's, it's good news and it's, uh, it's helpful for others to know. So make sure you're putting that information out there. Another reason to make sure that you have these profiles claimed is a lot of times people will leave reviews. And if people leave good or bad reviews, you want to know about it. And if these listings are claimed, you will. Like I said, there's probably already a lot of listings out there for your business. And they just need to be claimed. But a lot of times you're going to find that there are variations of your business listing. So some reasons for that, what might be a name variation, just because the names of companies can be slightly altered and everyone will still know what it is, whether it's putting an LLC behind it or something along those lines. Or maybe there was an old business at your location, or you've changed phone numbers, you've changed addresses, or you've used a call tracking number. Um, something that I like to point out to people who are located uh, within a suite in an address is to make sure you use the same abbreviation for suite even. It seems really nitpicky, but these are all things that search engines take into account when seeing that local consistency of name, address, and phone number. And it really builds that local trust and it gives you, that, gives you a chance to be located in those match results. If you find that when going to getlisted.org, let's say, you have some bad information out there. Say you have an old address, and this is a perfect example. Search Influence used to be located at 1423 Pine Street. So what I did here was I put our business name in quotes, space, plus sign, and then another space, and I entered the wrong address. And it gave me the results for all of the Search Influence pr profiles with that wrong address. And I'm able to go in there and fix those inconsistencies. If you have a business name inconsistency, what you might want to do is put the correct phone number in quotes and then start entering those variations of your business name. Uh, there is also another tool that you can use here called WhiteSpark. And this is something that we use uh, quite a bit when we have any kind of client come to us with uh, name, address, and phone number issues. Now let's talk about how, how we might link back to our site with some relevant content. Content marketing articles aren't as effective as they once were, but they certainly don't hurt. And they, they give search engines a sign that you, know, you are an authority on a particular topic. And the way that you do that is you write a article, an article, excuse me, about a particular topic that might be helpful for your customers or how to's and um, you know top five ways to uh, you know top five ways to avoid different things and it's really up to you on what you write on but you don't want to be salesy in this you just want to link back to a page on your site as the expert source at the end of that article social bookmarking is something that we call second tier link building and what that means is we're promoting sites that promote your site. And that might be a Facebook page, Twitter profile, LinkedIn, um, a press release about, uh, about your business. And social bookmarking is just a method used to share, organize, manage bookmarks of websites. So if I like a website, I'll go on my StumbleUpon account and say, this is, a really, this is a really good website for this category, and I can put tags on that within that category. This really helps to strengthen the links that are going back to your site. And that's really what we want to show search engines is that the links going back to your site aren't just links. They are actually being shared. They're helpful information, and it really builds the authority. 
I think it's really important to realize that results aren't going to come immediately with search engine optimization. You really have to be patient when it comes to this because search engines do not crawl your site every single day. We all wish they would, but they don't. So my advice is to just be patient. Give it, you know, give it three to six months before you really expect to see anything. Some things that you might want to track while doing your search engine optimization, which first of all, you really need to make sure you have Google Analytics on your website, and uh, that's another process that we won't go really deep into, but um, having Google Analytics gives you a real way to measure the success of what you're doing. And some of the metrics that we look at are organic search traffic, which are how many people that are how many people that are finding you by non-paid search. And then we have non-branded organic search traffic, which are visitors that came by search phrases not including your brand name. So in Search Influence's case, if they searched for Search Influence New Orleans, um, that would be a branded search and would not be included in this. We want to know if they're searching for our services and they're starting to come to us because that's when we know our SEO work is working. Then we have referral visits, and referral visits are just visits from visits from other sites that are not search engines, say like Facebook or LinkedIn or something like that. They landed on your page and then ended up coming uh, to your website. You want to know what sites are driving traffic so you can really push those even more. Then you have website visitor stats. And this is really important to see what kind of experience you're giving your user. You'll see these statistics in Google Analytics as well. And some really important ones to look at are time spent on site, bounce rate, pages per visit, and these are also things that search engines are taking into consideration, which in my opinion, it's not as perfect as a system yet as it needs to be because if I'm giving a user really great information on a single page and they call my business and at that point they bounce off, they had a, they had a good experience. They, they got what they needed and they got it immediately. So. That's something that's a little bit imperfect in search engines right now, but this is really important to see what pages people are landing on and staying on, what, page, what pages people are clicking over to, what's working and what's not. This is an example of some successes that we've had with a Mazda dealership in Reading, Pennsylvania. And as you can see, we did a lot of what we talked about today. We added keyword rich content to the site. We did some link building. We added directories. And we were pretty aggressive with it. And you know, again, we tempered the expectations to you know, say this is going to take some time. So you look at 2011 compared to 2012 in May. And they had 202 tracked keywords on the first page of Google at that point. This is a similar example with a similar approach. Um, not as aggressive and maybe a little bit more competitive of a market. And you can see the results are not going to be as magnified when you have that competition. So if you're a plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills, you're going to have a lot harder time ranking than a plumber in Jefferson, Louisiana. Here are a couple really good resources for more information. Uh, some of our uh, some of our staff here writes for these publications, but they'll offer a lot of really strong advice on SEO, upcoming updates, and really keep you up to date on what's going on. And it's something you can sign up for our newsletter to receive, and it's, it's easy enough to do. Also, a search influence blog is a really great place to get some strong information on updates and then just the latest in online marketing. And this picture here is actually um, pretty representative of you know, what we try to do with our clients. You know, we want to use the keywords and then you know, build backlinks, but you have to make it look natural. You can't really force it. I'd also like to give some advice on those of you who are looking to hire an SEO company or um, you have a web developer who's doing SEO, and 
the first the first thing I'd like to say is if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. If someone tells you that they're going to give you first page rankings in a month or a week or three months, whatever their guarantee is, there really is no guarantee. There you cannot guarantee search results on Google. And this is actually mentioned in Google's webmaster tools. Another question you want to ask is what kind of techniques are they using? We talked a lot about the Panda and Penguin algorithm updates. You know, are they are they producing unique content? You know, are they are they giving you relevant links to your site? You really want to make sure that they're following those rules because they might give you results on a more immediate basis, but if you get caught with those black hat tactics, you're really going to suffer in the long run. So you want to make sure that they're following those white hat rules. And then you want to make sure you look at the terms and conditions. I've had way too many customers come to me and say, you know, I'm stuck in this contract or you know, at the end of my contract, I don't own the content, so I need to basically build a new website, um, or they have a fee that they have to pay to terminate the contract. So just be sure when, you know, as you as you would be with any contract, just be sure that at the end of the contract, you know, for whatever reason, that you are going to own what, you know, all, all the work that you have paid for over that time. And then the two most important things are going to be reporting and then how do they define success. So reporting for online marketing is probably one of the easiest things you could possibly do. Reporting for TV commercials and radio and things like that are a lot more difficult, but with online marketing we can track exactly what people are doing as they're clicking through your website. So don't accept anything less than really strong reporting on how people are interacting with your site, how many people are filling out forms, and um, the results that they're giving you. And then when I talk about how they measure success, their measure of success should be, you know, your your phone ringing, your doors dinging, you know, really, really, it needs to be seeing an ROI. It needs to be beyond traffic to your website. And I think that's very important. Uh, it's a very important question to ask is how do they find how do they define success in what they're doing I hope uh, I hope this was helpful for everybody some uh, some points that you know we, we covered today were just how important local SEO is and then of course what you can do to optimize on and off your site and if you guys have any questions I'm happy to take questions at this point and um, of course you can have my information and contact me if you really if you think of something later down the line. Hey, thanks so much, Scott. Um, if if anybody has any questions, please go ahead and uh, you know we can start just a little discussion there. Uh, just type them into your chat box and we'll address them one at a time. If you have specific questions. Yeah, and while we're while we're waiting on the first few questions uh, to, to jump in, I'll just give the, the quick closing here in case anybody needs to hop off. Uh, Scott, once again, thank you so much, and uh, everybody, please be sure to reach out to Scott if you have any additional questions on um, on what SEO and what search influence can do for you. And um, as well, you know, for anybody that's not a current uh, eMerge client, I know we've got a lot of them uh, on the presentation today, but uh, feel free to reach out to me or, or request a little demo. You know, a lot of the things that we talked about today with the blogs. Uh, the social rankings, that sort of thing. Um, you know, eMerge can really be a big help in in automating a lot of that process for you. So, um, our website is realemerge.com, and uh, I'll make sure to go ahead and send y'all uh, my com my um, additional contact info on top of that. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So actually, Scott, somebody in the room here asked, uh, what's the general, you know, you said it's not an overnight process. What's the general timeline for starting to see some actual results from uh, SEO um, and uh, content marketing? That's really, that's a really good question. And it really depends on how aggressively you're attacking it. So if you are making a concerted effort on a regular basis to really, to really put out good content and, and put out business listings and get strong links back to your site. I think that 
three to six months is a reasonable expectation to start seeing results. And particularly if you're working with a company that's helping you, I think that that's a reasonable expectation. And again, you have to take a look at the competition in your market because it's not the same for every industry. Yeah, so there's a couple of questions just on um, are you going to receive this, or is this webinar uh, accessible after if you'd like to make additional notes? And uh, from eMERGE here, we're going to send out this webinar to all of the attendees later today. So we'll, we'll try and cut out the little, uh, the little picture of the uh, cute dog in between there, and uh, we'll send you the rest of the presentation. So we've got, a, we've got another question coming in here, Scott, uh, that says, I've heard that having a Google Plus page is very important and powerful. Um, how important is it to have a Google Plus page? It is very important, and we highly recommend that you build out a Google Plus page for your business. And that was one of the screenshots that I showed was actually the Search Influence Google Plus page. But it's a great opportunity to be on Google and you know play their game because as as little as the public may care about Google Plus, Google cares about Google Plus, and it's really something that we take very seriously now. And actually, as a part of our regular SEO, we're building out Google Plus listings and then posting on those uh, posting on those profiles. So another another question that we have here is: Do you suggest we have a personal website rather than use the company one? And I think this may be coming from uh, one of our one of our real estate um, audience today. Um, you know, in, in the real estate field, a lot of people have a, a website that is uh, catered to the brokerage, but not an individual website and you know, part of what we do at, e at eMERGE is offer, you know, to build those blogs out for the, uh, for the individual agents. Um, how important would you say it is to have that personal website linking back to your individual name if you are your own brand as an individual? Yeah, I think that having your own website is definitely advantageous, but, you know, completely understandable if, you know, you're an agent working for an agency and, it's not something that you're necessarily provided with or you want to put a lot of money into or something along those lines. Um, you know, you can definitely optimize what you have within the agency site and build your, you know, build backlinks and build, um, you know, build authority back to that particular page. So if you have a, an agency that's located throughout the U.S., you want to build, you know, build, um, citations back to the address of that local office and build it back t build all of your keywords back towards your local uh, I mean your location I've got a question here from Lucy about uh, is having video on your site helpful and uh, how can that video be optimized that's a great question too and, and video is really hot right now it's a big deal and part of the reason is because YouTube has been bought by Google, or has, uh, was some time ago now, and videos generally index very well on Google. So um, I, I think that having relevant videos on your site is a good idea. And to optimize those videos, you'll want to go to, um, you know, if you have a YouTube channel, you'll want to optimize the video on the YouTube channel by including the link to your site using keywords within the description, using keywords within the title. And then on the back end, um, there is some markup code that you can put on those videos that you know, if they're reviews, um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of doc a lot of elective surgeons and things like that will have reviews from patients and they'll tell them, you know, they'll be telling the viewer how happy they are with their services and that's something we highly encourage um, but there's some markup code that you can put on the back end of that that shows up as a five-star review um, if it comes up in search results great um, the next question and uh, I'm, ha I'm happy to jump in on this one as well is uh, what is the most economical way to hire someone to handle all of this for us and I'd say that the easy answer is uh, give Scott a call over at search influence to have him help with all of your SEO and uh, link building needs and call eMERGE to have uh, some help with your online uh, social media blog and email uh, needs. But no, in all, in all seriousness, um, definitely, you know, please reach out to Scott on an individual basis. Scott, maybe you can, 
maybe you could just address um, kind of what the baseline costs are. Uh, you know, if somebody wants to just get a, you know, really just starting to get uh, going with their SEO uh, strategy, um, you know, I can say for eMERGE, you know, the, uh, you know, the basic platform with our curated content and, um, all, you know, access to all of those tools is around $100 a month for eMERGE. Um, and, you know, certainly that we have more robust solutions uh, available. Um, tell me, tell us a little bit about uh, with SEO and kind of with, with your services, what you're looking at as far as uh, getting started there. Definitely, and it can vary greatly. I think something that I've repeated a few times now is depending on the competition, we really have to take, you know, we really just have to take that into consideration. So when we build a plan around what we want to do for a particular client, we're taking into consideration the market that they're in and the industry that they're in. And so it could start anywhere from a few hundred bucks and, and you know, and go up from there. But it really just depends on who we're working with. But that is really our starting point. Great. Um, are, there any other, are there any other questions here? Uh, feel free to just type in. We've got just another minute or two, and then uh, we'll go ahead and, and shut it down. Uh, make sure you save Scott's contact info there on the home screen. And again, um, my email address isn't listed, but if any has, anyone has particular questions for me, it's just jason at easyemerge.com. And you can also go to realemerge.com or easyemerge.com uh, to find out additional information on us as well. Um, yeah, we'll, be, we'll, we'll both be sending follow-up emails with all of the, uh, the included webinar presentation uh, as well as... Um, okay, wait, well, here we go. We have one more question here. We'll go ahead and squeeze this one in. Um, the, the next question, Scott, is what role do hashtags play in SEO? I know hashtags are also a really hot uh, topic right now, being as Facebook has also just recently launched their hashtags. Well, hashtags, they don't play a direct role in SEO, but they do play an indirect role. So if you, can, if you have a, a relevant hashtag that you know, is a trending hashtag that people might find your tweet or your Facebook post on, it gives you more visibility. And if more people are seeing your your post or a link that you're putting out there, that means you're getting more interaction. And search engines definitely appreciate social interaction and they're taking into account more and more things like social signals, uh, people liking and sharing and, and really engaging with the information you're putting out there. And I think that hashtags are definitely a good way to get it in front of more people's eyes. Great. Um, another question here is, uh, will you both be at the Explode conference in Jacksonville? Um, I know eMERGE will have a presence there and can certainly, you know, help make any introductions to Scott or the rest of the gang over at Search Influence, but um, we'll be hosting a breakfast panel over at, uh, in Jacksonville, and um, certainly we'll see uh, whoever that is uh, out there. Any last questions? All right. Well, Scott, thank you so much once again. We really appreciate you taking the time to uh, spend with us and uh, our audience today. And uh, to all the attendees, thank you so much for attending. Uh, feel free to reach out to Scott or I personally at any time or uh, go to searchinfluence.com or easyemerge.com for any more information uh, about either of our companies. Um, thanks so much again for attending, and uh, you all have a great rest of the week. Thank you, and appreciate it, Jason. All right, Scott. Bye-bye now.